I'm Ben Guyver, Senior Creative Relations Manager with Dolby. Pleased to be and honored to be joined by the legendary Mr. Bob Clearmountain. Thank you very much. Thank you for nice joining us. Here. Hi, everyone. So we are back at NAMM. How's the show going for you so far? It's been great. Really good. You know, really interesting. And I'm not, I just, it's so nice after all these years to run into old friends again that I haven't seen since the, the last NAMM show a couple of years ago. It's nice to see people in the third dimension now, once again, rather yeah, than just right, on screen well, for once, yeah, too. Exactly. Right? I know. And it's great. And the whole the, the whole Amos thing, I mean, every Amos is the big buzz here. I mean, that's what everybody's talking about. Everybody's interested and everybody wants to know everything about it. And, you know, I get I get inundated with questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Well, thank you for your support. And I mean, coming from such experienced uh, mix work in surround sound and 5.1. Should I go into a little yeah, bit? Yeah, please, um, absolutely. I, I always start with a stereo mix and I mix the, the Atmos and the stereo at the same time on my SSL, which you can also do in most DAWs, you can do it the same way. Um, but so I'll have a stereo mix and as I'm doing the stereo mix, I'm thinking to, in the back of my head, oh, well, let me see this. Okay, the room mics for the drums, they'll go in the back and you know, okay, the string section might be nice in the back, you know, things like that. And, and then I'll be assigning on my multi-channel buses because my stereo mix is coming off the pan pots. And then I have a small fader that's post fader to the, the multi-track buses. And then I have a group of those that are going to the, the Atmos channels. And so I'm, I'm just gradually kind of selecting channels. And then at some point when I finally get my, my stereo mix together and I got a couple passes in the automation, then I'll I'll um, I'll switch over my monitor, which is uh, really easy on this device here, um, because it's just a matter of um, it, it's got different um, different workflows. So this it's set up each one those little green speakers represents a each one of these is a speaker output, and that says that they're all on the first twelve, which are my Atmos, and then. Um, so this is like a, a stereo workflow. So the st this is the main two speakers in my Atmos system. And then, uh, and so, that, that, so then I can switch between the stereo and the Atmos really easily. And then this is a, another stereo. Well, these are my Yamaha speakers. And then those are my TV speakers, 15 and 16. And so it's really easy to switch back and forth. And then there's an another one. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then, this is the, the stereo is actually coming off my SSL, where you can see this is the SSL selector. So it's going back and forth between actually two. It's a little complicated to explain, but I actually have two Mark, Symphony Mark IIs. But um, so it makes it really easy. It's a, uh, you know, it just makes the whole, the whole thing. I, I had a very, a much more complicated s s system with a, a digital uh, monitor controller. And, and, but I already had the Mark II on my print rig because I have a separate, separate analog, uh, sorry, separate multi-track and separate print rig. And, um, and then I realized, well, what am I doing with this $9,000 digital monitor controller that made my life really complicated with Dante and everything. And so I went back to just the Symphony, used that as the monitor controller. And Apogee's just coming out this week with a, with a, I hate to be promoting Apogee on no, your No, please booth. do. That's the system you're using. So let's hear yeah. about it. And um, but there's a software update now that does all this these workflows that I'm talking about, and it's fantastic. And and I just lo I love the whole thing. I, I'm I'm hoping that more manufacturers of home audio products like you know Pioneer or Sony or whoever, they they make low priced systems that wireless systems that people can set up in their living room. Please, you know, because I want people to hear what I'm hearing because it's such a wonderful thing. You get a great mix. And I mean, I've heard a lot of amazing mixes around here and people should hear it that way. And yeah, headphones are cool. You know, you get the thing, especially the Apple head tracking sort of helps a bit and it's nice. But uh, people, people got to hear this, you know, because it's so much fun. 
Yeah. And it's accessible now, right? It's out there. It's on the streaming music services. People can easily hear these mixes. So I'm yeah. sure for, for you coming from a place where you had to have very expensive equipment to be able to hear some of these mixes or be in the right environment at the right time, right. to have this now be accessible to everybody and this art yeah. that you've been working on for so long, just being everybody's you know, home or in pocket or their earbuds, uh, it's pretty exciting. It's, it really is exciting. It, it really is an incredible technology, you know? Um, I, I'm happy that Dolby's really pushing this, and and uh, and it, where, where else? Okay, did I have anything else to show you? I think that was about it. <laughs> so you built yeah. a system around the, the Apogee, which gives you a fantastic way to control the analog world and the Atmos system yeah, as it's, well. It's controlling the monitoring. It's I mean it's the it's the interface on my print rig anyway, and wow, and it also controls all the speakers, you know, and so. There's a lot of great speaker companies around here. PMC, there, I did. They did a demo for me. I played something in there, uh, and uh, it's pretty sounds pretty good, you know. A, and I think Focal and Cali. There's a lot of great speaker manufacturers, all different scales, different, you know, depending on your budget. And uh, and now now it's getting it's getting so so you can actually put a pretty great at most mixing room in a, in a small room. And, you know, most people are mixing in the box, which is a lot less expensive than what I got going. <laughs> yeah, so talk a little bit about your compression chain and the system you've set up to have the 16 channels of compression. Oh, right, yeah, well, what, what I did, you know, I use the SSL 4K, and I've always liked the SSL compressor, the stereo compressor. And about tw over 20 years ago, when I started mixing 5.1, I thought, well, how can I keep that sound for my 5.1 mixes? And so luckily the SSL comes with eight extra VCAs that aren't doing anything, they're just patchable VCAs. And I slaved them off of the stereo compressor. I just took a DC voltage and put a little op amp in there and just boosted up the level so it was compatible. And then I had a, a 5.1 compressor. As long as I had a stereo mix going into the main stereo compressor, then the, that just followed along. Um, and so then Atmos came along and said, okay, now what am I gonna do? And luckily my assistant found on, uh, I think it was a site called Reverb, that a rack, the, the, the same VCA cards, you know, four more, it's called the Euro rack for the SSL, that had four more cards. So now I have a 16, we've linked it all together, I have a 16 channel analog bus compressor, which is fantastic. And with a little help from Lucas Vandermeer at Apogee, um, I have controls so I can actually compress less, like the sides, the rears, and, or the overheads. Because like doing, I do a lot of live, uh, you know, live concert videos and things like that. And if I'm hitting the, the main compressor too hard, then the the audience sounds like it's kind of flitting in and out. You know, it sounds a little funny. And so I can reduce. For, for certain types of music, I can change how much compression I'm doing in the other the other channels. And uh, that's really, I wonder, nice. uh, there might be a picture of the, there. Okay, this is the Apogee controller that's on my desk. And so it runs, it's just a USB into the com computer print rig. And then here here's the controls for the, uh, the compression. And see, it's just in percentages, they're all notched uh, knobs, so I could go, you know, say 50% for the for the rears or the overheads if I want to. Oh, that's so cool. You know? And, no. <laughs> it's, unfortunately, it's totally custom. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure somebody else, somebody clever could could build it. You know what I mean? I, we thought about maybe Apogee building something like that, but it's difficult. I, I hate to say it. It's, it's nothing that I, I can sell you. <laughs> So do you have like a post big fader that's pushing everything at once and then kind of smaller faders that are assigned or? Uh, well, just the master fader. Well, that's the thing is that the, the, in the SSL compressor, the master fader is also the same VCAs. And so when I fade, if I do a fade on the master fader, it fades all the, cha all the Atmos channels. That's perfect. You know? And so it's, it, I mean, I'm very lucky that I have all this stuff. And plus I have people at, at Apogee to help me with the technical stuff. 
Yeah, so from a creative perspective, using kind of the Atmos workflows, how are you sort of treating objects and beds? Are you doing most of your work in, in the bed? This world? is interesting because a lot of people use all objects. I've heard, you know, I don't really see the point of that. I'm sure there is a point, but I'm using the bed. Um, the the overhead speakers, I'm, I have four stationary objects. That, I mean, I can move them, but th those are just dedicated objects for the overhead so that I can have like a quad a reverb or an ambience or something like that. And uh, so that's always always up there. And then, then, then I have two more channels just for if I want to float something around, you know, two more buses. And then I'm kind of out of buses on my console because <laughs> it's really just 24 out. And um, but, you know, once in a while and this thing that I'm going to play, can we play this thing? Yeah, absolutely. This starts out with something that's kind of this kind of cranky. Can we go to the renderer sound. real quick and just play the track, please? Whenever you're ready, this sir. Is, this is a, a band called a, a bad thing and it's really this one guy michael marquart who's who's quite brilliant actually and this is the third album oh, hang on one sec and then uh so you'll hear in the beginning there's this kind of this kind of cranky guitar that kind of floats around and then it's a it's it's an interesting piece of music i think here we go yeah she draws the blade on open skin it's almost paradise That was gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks very much. So object wise, I keep it pretty simple, obviously, you know, but I've heard some like EDM, some electronic mixes that were just things are flying all over the place. And it's it can be amazing. I could really for electronic music, it's the objects really come into play more so for me. A lot of a lot of my mixes don't have anything moving around because I'm an old rocker, you know, and people just stand on stage and play. <laughs> And yeah, and I think the system you've set up, it gives you so much flexibility, right? But it also allows you to really honor the creative intent of the original mix by staying true to the tools that you're used to. Now you've got more space to work with, right? But you're right. doing it through the board that you're used to, the system yeah. that you're used to, and you can kind of lend your magic and that art to their mixes and keep that creative intent in place. Yeah, well, exactly right. You know, I mean, I, I've been doing it... <laughs> the same way for years it is really just an extension of what i've been doing i'll give folks uh, the opportunity to ask a few questions because i know there's a lot of people here that are yeah, excited sure. to see you but um talk about the joe bonamassa record real quick oh yeah and, uh time I clocks right i should have brought that yeah well uh, the second thing that i mix in atmos is the joe bonamassa record called time clocks and uh that that album was just so suited for they they had no idea about atmos or anything like that and um, I mixed it for my friend Kevin Shirley, who produced it. And uh, I said, oh, well, I was all set up to do Atmos. So, OK, I'm doing an Atmos mix also. And it's sort of sort of become a, a we just use it as a demo mix for Apogee. You know, just this, this one song called um, it's called Curtain Call. We don't we don't I don't you don't have it, right? I don't think so. No, unfortunately, I didn't have an ADM of it, but um, it's if you get a chance to hear this record, first of all, even in stereo, it's an amazing album. I mean, the guy's just outdone himself. It's the songs are great. I love the whole record, you know, Joe Bonamassa. And it's called the album's called Time Clocks. And the, the if, if you're listening to it in Atmos, listen to the song Curtain Call. It's like an epic, like a uh, seven minute song. Jeff Bova did this amazing string arrangement. It's uh, just remarkable that it sounds like an orchestra, but it's keyboards. <laughs> and how about the band Cahoots oh, uh, 50th yeah. anniversary as well? Yeah, the, well, that was the first thing I mixed. That's why I ended up doing upgrading, because BMG called me. I had done the first three uh, 50 year anniversary of the first three band albums, Big Pink, The Band, and Stage Fright. And I did them all in 5-1 in stereo. And this one they called up, they said, oh, could you deliver an Atmos mix as well? And I said, I thought, looked around my room, and I went, uh, yeah, I could probably do that. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure out a way. And uh, two weeks later, I scrambled, I threw some speakers up in the ceiling and <laughs> got two. Luckily, I had two more. I used these Dyn Audio BM15As 
I had two more over at our other studio, and so we just stuck them up, and off we went. <laughs> and we did that, and that that record's another fun one to listen to, because like um, on the song uh, uh, "Life Is a Carnival," which is kind of the if you could call it a hit, I don't know if it was a hit. It's the most recognizable song in that album. Alan Toussaint's horn arrangement is in the back speakers, and it was actually on three tracks, so it works really well. You know, it's like. It's really fun. Nice. So be sure to check those out on streaming services. And last question for you, Bob. If a new mixer or engineer producer is looking to get into Atmos, what would be your the Bob Clear Mountain words of wisdom that you would give a new mixer or, or an experienced mixer that's looking to maybe convert their studio or implement an Atmos system? Wow. Uh, I should have been prepared for that one. <laughs> uh, Put you I, on the spot. I don't know. Just just be creative. Yeah. You know. Okay. One. one this, I can't. I don't want to tell anybody how to mix because everybody has their own way of doing things. But you probably noticed with that what we just played is that the vocal is generally in the center speaker. I'm a big fan of the center speaker after mixing five one for years. At first, I thought, "What is this center speaker thing?" But once I figured it out, and it's nice because I can walk around the room, and the vocal's always there. The snare drum and bass drum are always coming from the same place. They don't move. You know, and I, I, I usually don't pull things out into the room at all, other than maybe I'll put a guitar in between these two speakers or something like that, you know. And uh, and so I, it's it's just good to kind of anchor things. It's one of the reasons I like the bed, because I just, I, I you know, this, this instrument's coming out of that speaker, that instrument's coming out of that speaker, and it, it keeps the picture... Um, kind of coherent it really does and i really like to like stand over there or stand back there and listen to the mix because because we were you know because i'm part of apogee we have a lot of people come over all the time to to our place and we have this little show where we play some some songs in the studio and uh i'm always you know everybody else is sitting in the middle the guests are sitting where you guys are sitting and so i'm standing over there so and so so i kind of tailor the mix so that you can stand any place and you don't have to sit in a sweet spot although i wouldn't sit here because <laughs> i couldn't afraid, hear afraid anything that was going on back there it gives you that consistency right you know what to expect there when you're using the yeah that way. yeah you really do you know and uh it's just really a fun thing to do you know it's a fun way to listen to music i love sitting in the sitting in the middle and you just when you feel like you're just in the middle of the music and but the music still has a focus and you're not losing the song like i said like i started out saying that's still the most important thing to me whether it's no matter what the format is it's this the song is the important thing and the narrative of the song is the important thing to me that's something that springsteen drilled into my head for years nice but uh let me i, I think there's another thing there's a there's a band and the guys are here actually there's a band called The Acid Test that not many people would know about, but there's a... Oh, no, sorry. They, they were originally called The Acid Test. They ended up being called uh, Altered State, right? And um, really good album. I can't remember the name of the album, but there's a, there's a song called um, Ghost Beside My Bed, which is which I really want to remix in Atmos because it's that type of thing. But right, One more question back here, Bob. So I'm I'm wondering if you if technology is now catching up to how you've been wanting to hear. So I imagine you've been hearing in 3D your whole life, and thought, how do I get that? I want that's, that over there, right? That's a great question because because <laughs> I mixed an album years ago in the 80s by a, a band called the Rock, Roxy Music, the Roxy Music, no, yeah. just Roxy Music, uh, an album called Avalon, and uh, oh, thank you. And I always, when I mixed it in stereo, I wished that there were more speakers. I thought, man, that the, the stereo isn't enough for this album. It was such a beautiful, wonderful record to mix. And then when 5.1 came along, I was able to remix that in 5.1. And now uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to do so it too. again. And, I love that and record. Atmos. And so, yeah, you, you know, the technology comes along and all of a sudden, okay, let's hear, hear that stuff. You know, it was great to, to for the Cahoots album 
to hear that in Atmos because everybody's just used to hearing it in in stereo and it's, a, it's still a great record in stereo but I actually think it's better of course I did some rearranging they let me <laughs> Robbie Robertson would say he didn't actually like the, the way it came out he said look do whatever you can to make it better right <laughs> so I kind of re did a little bit of work on it <laughs> that magic that clear mountain magic all right I don't know it's, we we do so. <laughs> Great. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks for saying that. Really I appreciate, appreciate you doing this with us and uh, great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. And thanks so much for having me. And thanks for everybody to come and listen. Hope everything, everyone's doing well and having a good show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Clearmountain thanks. from the Dolby booth at NAMM. Cheers.